Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another new Chromebook from Acer to check out today. This one is called the R13, and it's a convertible Chromebook, so you can run it as a regular laptop if you want. Uh, the display will go flat against your desk, and then you can flip the keyboard around and get uh, display mode out of it, like you've seen on other convertibles. It works in tent mode, and then of course you can flip it back into full tablet mode, and it will disable the keyboard and trackpad uh, when you're in this mode. And this is one of the Chromebooks that uh, will support the Google Play Store in a few months once they uh, get all that functionality implemented across uh, all the different Chromebooks that are out there. I covered how that's going to work in another video, which I'll put down below in the video description. And this will be, at some point, uh, one of the laptop's Chromebooks uh, that supports that. Uh, before we get into the hardware, though, I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's get into the hardware now. This has a 13.3-inch IPS touch display, and it's really nice to start seeing more IPS displays making their way into some Chromebooks, because we looked at a Chromebook from Acer not that long ago that was only about 200 bucks that had an IPS display as well. Uh, the price on this one, though, is a little more. It's $399, as you see it, so this is more of a mid-range Chromebook, but uh, you do get a full 1080p on this one. Uh, the casing is all metal. My only concern with with it is the hinge because uh, it looks like it flexes a bit uh, when you're in tablet mode here as you can see so I'm not sure how long that might last you may want to be careful with it, it does feel like you could with enough effort kind of snap it off so that was my only uh, thing that I noticed that I wasn't uh, too crazy about on the overall hardware design the hinge itself has got a pretty good amount of friction to it so I think it'll generally stay put uh, where you leave it the screen will bounce slightly but uh, not too bad on that uh, you got four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM on board 32 gigabytes of internal storage and and it's got a quad-core ARM processor, which is interesting because a lot of these mid-range Chromebooks now are running with Intel chips. Uh, this one is ARM, and as you'll see in a few minutes, it actually performs better than many of the Intel Chromebooks we have looked at. Now, what they've done with this is uh, split the cores on it. So it is quad-core, but two of those cores are a Cortex-A72 at 2.1 gigahertz. The other two are a Cortex-A53 at 1.7 gigahertz. So the slower Cortex-A53 is used used to save power. So if you're just sitting on a website here, it might turn off the faster cores and use the slower ones because you're really not going to need uh, that kind of performance when you're just kind of sitting idle or looking at your email or something. And it's only when you need more performance when it will turn on those additional cores. You'll save power and get longer battery life on it. And they rate the uh, battery life at around 12 hours. I'm seeing about 10 to 12 on uh, my usage. So it really will vary based on what you're doing with it. But uh, the battery life on it, though, is quite good. It has a PowerVR GX6250 GPU, has 802.11ac built in for wireless Bluetooth 4.0. It weighs about 3.28 pounds or 1.49 kilograms, so not all that heavy, maybe a little uh, more in line with some of the mid-range Windows laptops we have looked at, so not too bad on that front. Fanless and completely solid state, of course. And you've got a bunch of ports to take a look at on here, including a full service USB type C connector. So you can do data, video and power over that port, which is good to see. You've got a full size HDMI port, full size USB 3.0 port. You've got a micro SD card slot here so you can uh, offload some of your media to something if you're concerned about uh, running out of space. The speakers are interesting on this because uh, they're on the side, but they're also on the bottom. So if you have the laptop flat, uh, you'll largely hear the sound kind of emanating out of the sides here. It doesn't sound great, but it's, it's decent. It's good enough for web conferencing and maybe some video watching. But I think if you're going to be listening to music or something, connect a pair of headphones. And you can do that uh, on the other side here. So you have your uh, headphone uh, microphone adapter over here. So if you've got a combo headset, you can plug it right in there. Your power switch is here. You've got a Kensington lock for locking it down on a desk. And you've got a volume rocker here too, which is kind of nice to see on there as well. I'm quite fond of the keyboard. Very deep travel on these keys. Uh, really comfortable to type on. Uh, Google largely did dictates the uh, way these keyboards look and the spacing of them, but every Chromebook feels different in how it types, and this one's a pretty nice keyboard, really good, decent keys. I'm quite pleased with that. The trackpad's okay. It's a click pad, a little spongy, but not bad. Um, I've seen worse trackpads, but uh, I've also seen better trackpads too, but it is adequate enough uh, for what you're getting here. 
All right, so let's get into performance now. And I was surprised that it performs as well as it does, given that it's running with an ARM processor. Usually that's a smartphone kind of processor. It doesn't always do as well on these Chromebooks, but on this one, it's actually performing uh, better than Intel. However, uh, you will run into some issues when playing back 1080p 60 video content here. So while it does play without any real lag, you will lose frames. I've been dropping frames on this 1080p 60 video from YouTube uh, throughout its playback. You may not notice it if you're watching it, but if you pull up the stats for nerds, uh, you will see a number of drop frames uh, come across, but it never gets laggy. It just drops the frames and keeps going. So it does suffer a little bit on the higher end video formats. It does fine on uh, 30 frames per second content like you would get on Netflix and of course other YouTube videos too, including the one you're watching right now. But uh, just be advised, it's not a very good 1080p 60 experience. Uh, web browsing on it though is very decent and efficient. In fact, it feels as snappy as uh, many of the Intel devices we have tested. And I'm quite pleased with just how well it performs the wireless AC is also nice to have on board as well. So uh, as you're browsing around the web, I don't think you're going to have uh, too many sacrifices to make here, even though you're not running with an Intel chip on board. So really decent performance uh, out of an ARM processor here. And on the Octane benchmark test, we got a score of 9,575, which puts it uh, well ahead of many of the Intel devices we've looked at recently. And a good comparison is another Acer Chromebook called the Acer Chromebook 14. That one is running with a Celeron N3160 processor, and we got a score of 8,160 on that one, which also has a 1080p display uh, versus what you saw on this one at 9,575. So a, a really a good performance out of an ARM-based device here. So don't let that processor scare you off. I think it actually uh, is a good choice for a Chromebook like this one, and I think it'll perform uh, quite well against others in or around its price point. So overall, a decent device here, really nice touch panel on it. I like the two-in-one functionality. I am, though, concerned about that hinge, and I'm, uh, I'm I'm reluctant to really stress it too much here, but it really feels like that's going to be a problem for folks over time. But uh, beyond that, it's a pretty well-constructed device here that performs uh, exceptionally well, uh, surprisingly so, given what it's running under the hood. And it's going to gain a lot of functionality when those Google Play Store apps come to it a little later in 2017. So stay tuned for that. I got a link down below in my video description of all the other Chromebooks I have looked at here on the channel. I'll also provide a link to the Google page that they update frequently, which gives you an idea as to which devices support the Android apps and when other devices will be getting them. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.